King Thomas to see you. This is the Daily Bread Show. This is episode 109. This is episode 109. Let me write that down. This is episode 109. And what that means is over the last 108 weeks, we've been giving out knowledge. We've been helping people to educate, motivate, and elevate them. And the thing about our show, the good thing about our show, it's about personal finance from a spiritual perspective. So we don't do religion on the Daily Bread Show. Hello, this is Wally Davis, and you are listening to the Daily Bread Radio. It's the best in radio. <laughs> why, 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 why get that little... Why, 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 <laughs> that's, why end, that's why he said, it's the best. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> I got to give him that one, man. So you can do that when you're a celebrity. It's the best. But um, we do Hi, everything. My name is Kobe, and you're listening to my papa on the Daily Blood Radio Show. <laughs> I'm through now. All right, man. That's my guy, man. Through. That's my guy. That's my guy. But, uh, hey, man, why don't you straighten this? Man, man, go ahead. Show, man. You got me on half the Man, screen. go ahead. Man. Like, I'm supposed to be hugging somebody. But um, the thing, whoop, there you go, man. There you go. There you go. Man, you a keep. Hey man, you have to flip it. Why the daily bread backwards? I did flip it. Man, you ain't flipped it, man. man. I'm looking at the thing and say Turn upside daily down. bread backwards. Turn upside, upside down. down. But anyway, um, what we do each and every week, we talk about topics related to personal finance, and what I try to do is just enlighten people, right? I just really try to, you know, share some knowledge, share some information that people can take action on immediately. If not soon, immediately. 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 You know what I'm saying? So I just that's what we do on the Daily Bread Radio Show. And to um, tonight, I feel honored, uh, special, and I'll give the story out shortly. But uh, we're gonna have a special guest to join us at the bottom of the hour, 8:30. Cause I'm 
Because some people get all twisted up about bottom it out, top it out. But at 8.30, um, we're going to have a young lady to join us that um, she has a special story. And she reached out to me and, and really just asked, like, hey, would it be okay if, uh, or would I be willing to talk about her cause or what she's working on? And, and she's assisting someone. So I said, oh, by all means, because it's my show. I do what I want to do on my show. So, and my show is all about helping people. So, like I told her, and like I tell people, it ain't about fame, it ain't about fortune. All of that's going to, you know, God will take care of all of that fame and fortune. That, that ain't what it's about. It's about helping people, pouring into people, elevating people, and, and being of assistance, you know, being a, being a vessel. Because truthfully, I'm not doing any of this. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm literally not doing any of this, but um, it's really just God working through me. It's God really working through me, and um, I accept the challenge. That's, that's the best way for me to put it. I accept the challenge. Love what I do. I couldn't say enough about my audience. Can't say enough about my following. Can't say enough about the people that encourage me. Hey, that was a great word, you know, a great laugh. And, you know, I always try to keep it upbeat. Because no need of being down, no need of being, you know, sad and worried and that kind of stuff. Because it's going to be a time and a place for that. It's going to be a time and a place where we all going to have to go through that phase of life where we, you know, we really are, you know, feeling down. We, we, we really conflicted about something that's going on in our life or a challenge that we're having. And um, but that don't need to be every day. Let's wait till you get into that season. Don't 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 stay in that season. Don't bring that season on prematurely. Just, you know, work to get the best out of life because it's a finite, not infinite. It's a finite amount of time that we have. So we need to make the most of it. We need to make sure that we're making the most of this. So, and, and on the Daily Bread Radio Show, that's what we try to do. We're going to bring it every week. We're going to make sure that we continue to grow the show. We're going to continue to make sure that we grow everything about the show, the social media. I follow, I see my lovely wife on Pretty, oh pretty girl, and uh, Tanya Thompson, love her to death. I see my son on. I see. <laughs> uh oh, I see. I see. <laughs> I ain't gonna start, man, cause tonight, man, tonight. I don't think Skill was on when you got hurt, when you missing, man. Skill, my producer was was man. He he had some words for you, so I ain't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> they passed the Skill. <laughs> Pastor Skill, man. Hey, man, look. Man, Lord, I already told you. Listen, man. He, he's my spiritual advisor. You know what I'm saying? Un Skill. Unlike you, unlike you, he has a real, you know what I'm saying? He got his collar. He got his outfit. He, he really does. He, you know, he's not professing it, but he's doing it. I know he's doing, doing, doing my, it, too. That's my spiritual advisor. So um, that's what it's about. But tonight, we're going to we're gonna take the second half. Not sure how long that's going to take, but. We're going to do it because that's our duty. We're going to do our duty tonight. So hopefully everybody can, um, you know, stay locked in to what we're talking about. And I'm going to jump around and get right to, you know, a couple of things we wanted. Because last week I forgot. Man, we got someone to the show last week. It was good, man. It was a good show? Yes, sir. Yes, Did sir. you go back and look at it? I, man, I always look at it. Man, you don't always go back and look at it, man. Because I'm sometimes looking at them shows. Volume be off. I see, man, he ain't looking hold at on, these hold shows. On. Hold on, you ain't never got no volume off. No, sir. No, sir. We top tier Listen here, to bro. This, man. Listen we to top this. tier. Listen to this. No, sir. No, sir. No, top tier. Man, this is a top tier type of, top -tier. Top -tier type of man, operation. I, I, I put DKM up against any, any of them. Any of them. <laughs> That's the way you're supposed to feel. Because I'm like, hey, I know ain't no better show than this one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just any a matter. Hey, man, you have to pipe down, man. Do I? Man, I told you, I've been don't telling you this no, for two years, look here, man. Look here, I'm going to tell you like this here. I've been telling you this for don't two years, man. No you're going to have to pipe down, down, bro. You're going to have to pipe down, man. If, if you don't want no answer, don't you ask me no question. You don't want no answer, don't ask me no question. I'm gonna man, give you I'm, I'm going to have to put you on mute, bro. But uh, I think Dang tonight, because we don't have a lot of time, but tonight, a couple things that we need to talk about, like really, 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 really quick, that's um, been on my heart. We, I went back and looked at that video, man. We were joking about this, but this is serious. We, we, we have to, and uh, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. So 
I know the show's about personal finance. I know the show's about everything related to personal finance. But the one thing, I went back and I was looking at the video and I was laughing at first. But then I really really sat down and thought about it, man. We we got to make health number one, right? We got to put we got to move health up on the priority list because it ain't gonna do no good to have all that money stacked up and all of you use all of them, you know, all of those things that you learned on the Daily Bear Radio Show and you got all your debt eliminated, you got all your investments in place, you got all your estate planning done, and you sitting over there, man, just can barely move. So that was one of the things that was on my heart, like. I really want to keep that message going is that our health, we, we have to make our health priority number one. Absolutely. That's going to have to be part because a lot of the stuff that we develop, a lot of the stuff that we end up having, it's it's preventable. Mm -hmm. And I work, in that, I work in that space and I look at a lot of data related to high blood pressure, strokes, um, heart disease, heart attacks, Stress, we already talked about stress extensively. But I look at a lot of data for large groups of people, um, large companies, and a lot of times, a lot of this stuff is preventable. Obesity is rampant, I mean, especially in kids. So, I mean, we really got to make health, health is that, we want to move that up on the priority list. Like, yeah, health got to be number one on the, on the priority list, and then, you know, everything else. But... You already, and I ain't saying one is a, as far as being in front of God, but one as opposed to money first, we got to put health first and then money. So God is always one. So however you want to do it, don't let come in front of that. So that's, I mean, we that's we don't even have to mention that. That's what it is. So, but let's let's move that health up. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is this. This is something I was thinking about um, recently as well. Is like. We got to get started, right? I mean, it, this is 109 shows. I got a thousand. I'm committed to doing a thousand. Now, if we if we haven't popped off, <laughs> if, if 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 this show if this show has not achieved its highest and best use by the time we get to a thousand, hey. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I ain't gonna, I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else. If we haven't done what we need to do by the time we get to a thousand shows, I'm talking about man, all of the family ain't do a thousand shows. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Sanford and the Son ain't do a thousand shows. The Jeffersons ain't do a thousand. Friends, cheers, you know, none of if we do a thousand shows and we haven't hit where we needed to hit by one thousand, then we got some issues. I'm gonna have to call on the main line. <laughs> Tell them what you want. I'm gonna have to call. I'm gonna say, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I know you said, <laughs> don't want for nothing. Be patient, but I'm like, hey, all right. But uh, we got a ways to go. We got a lot of work to do and a lot of people to help. And that's what we're here for. But, you know, from a, really from an economic perspective, one of the things that I'm, I'm saying, like, week in and week out is we have to get started. I mean, I'm just running into people. I run into people a lot, like, man, I love that show, man. You're doing so much. Of but I'm like, now we got to move into the second phase. Like, I want to start hearing, listening to your show, man, I got my credit straight. I was listening to your show. I went out. I got my, you know, uh, my investment. I went on and started getting my investment portfolio together. I was listening to your show, and now I'm starting to teach my kids the importance of saving. I'm listening to, I, that's what I'm, I'm listening, I'm looking out for that now. So a lot of times God said we don't receive because we didn't ask. So I'm asking right now as a witness, like, I want to start hearing that. Because results, then that lets me know, like, hey, you know what, it ain't, it ain't just, look, Edu, let me write this word down. I bet not say it because one of y'all might take it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to say it anyway because, like I said, people got to take action. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to just be edutainment. Mm -hmm. right? I don't want this to be edutainment. Like, 
I'm giving you information from an educational standpoint on financial literacy, and then you looking at me sitting here having all this fun, laughing, joking, and thinking it's it's something light, but it's serious. I just make light of it because I want people. I want it to be digestible, mm -hmm. right? I want it to be digestible because it's kind of like when you was a baby, right? When you a baby and you don't have no teeth, I can't give you meat when you don't have no teeth, right? I got to make it where it's palatable. So I got to take that cereal, put some milk on it, and you know, make it where you could just gum it, and then you can still digest it. But it's the same thing with this information. I don't want to be just, you know what I'm saying? Just up here, ah, having a good time. Ah. I look at the video, I laugh. Every time I look at it, I laugh. It's funny, mm -hmm. but the message. But for me, I can always dissect the message from it. So I don't, I, I mean, but that's just me. I, that's what I do. So we're going to have some edutainment, but at the same time, I want you all to start taking action. I want you all to seriously start taking some action, saying, you know what, man, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Today, today is the day when I start saving one dollar, one dollar a day. Now, if you say, we talked about this a few weeks ago, one dollar every day, and then every day you double it. So the day you start off, you put a dollar aside, and a dollar should be manageable. Mm -hmm. And then the next day you put away $2, and then $3, and then $4, and then 5 and you just keep going. But it's, let me let me take it, I'm going to make it easy, not $1 a day, $1 a week. Mm, come on. $1, and then you double it every week. So week one, put in a dollar. Week two, $2. Week three, four dollars. And you just keep going, right? But you ain't even, that's too much. All right, that's too much. I ain't, I, I'm not going to do that to you. Yeah, that's okay. Right, that would be too much. Y'all just, because we talked about that number too. So we ain't going to do that number. I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you something even easier. We're going to make it pre-K. Kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. A dollar a week, and you just add another dollar. And just do that for 52 weeks. So this week, put in a dollar. Next week, $2. Third week, $3. And just do that for a year. Just like that. $1, $2, $3. The fourth week, 30 days, $4. So on the fourth week, you put in $4. Everybody can do that. And then you just keep going. Week five, week six, week seven. Now you do that for one year. Just do it for a year. And you could do that for a year. Because when you when you start getting into the latter part of the year, you, you put in $40 last week, and then the next week you put in $41. But you can still do that. That's manageable. That's that's really manageable, right? Because after a year, you're going you gonna to be able to do that. I got faith in you. But at the end of a year, you're going to have $1,300. Why is that important? That's important because they say, I mean, the statistics say, Less than, like, what? They said some crazy number. Less than 30% of the people in the U.S. have $1,000 in savings. I said less than 30%, not more than. Less than 30% of the people in the U.S. have, have less than $1,000 in savings. That's just, this, that's data. You can't refute data, right? So a lot of times when I come over here, people say, oh, no, do the research. Do the research. So we got to make it more than edutainment. Right? And start taking actions. And I and I'll take anybody up on that challenge. Right? So if somebody's oh I can't, if you want to start up, I'll start off with you. I'll put my dollar in today. Anybody want to start today, you can give us a call or you can text me or you can email me, Daily Bread Radio Show at Yahoo.com. You can text me. Um 470-322-5122. That's the office number. 470-322. 5122. Um, you can email me, Daily Bread Radio Show. Anybody who want to join the challenge, or you can just do it for yourself. Dollar or two, and just do it for a year. Why is that important? That's important because once you have a little bit of savings, when something comes onto your horizon, you're not in a constant, perpetual motion, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Just join in. You have some, something come up, you got a thousand saved, something come up, you need $400, you just, bam. Okay, boom.
I ain't got a thousand no more. I got six hundred. But guess what? I was able to keep it moving. I wasn't in no, you know, stress strain. And now you're stressing out about something, and then you building up pressure. Next thing you know, you are having a bad health event. So let's start taking some action. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some action oriented breadheads. Because the people who listen to the Daily Bread Show, they are the breadheads. So before we get into the bottom of the hour, we'll give you all a couple. Oh man. It's crazy, bruh. How long I was looking for this picture, man? Me and the old girl. I think I was, I looked like my grandson on this joint. I probably was like, I was probably about his age. I'm probably about 10, though. That was me and the old girl. I opened up this book, man. And God, her, me and the old girl. You can tell my old girl was a G. She's sitting on here with a goddamn medallion you know. The other day. Come on now. Look, boy, oh, that's yeah, a G. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no regular. She's a yeah. dress. <laughs> she brought out a pistol. <laughs> she even got that smirk on, like, yeah, right. <laughs> I wish a Negro would. Oh, man. That boy. Now, that, man, I'm going to sit this right up here. That made my, man, that made my day, man. But uh, book of the week. Kevin Cop. Got a lot of business people out there tuning into the show. I see you all on. Eric Strickland, I see you, bro. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Uh, this is Seeing the Big Picture by Kevin Cop. I've had this book on before. Hey, man, don't be going nowhere because uh, the guest's coming on now. Um, and Seeing the Big Picture, it's a great book. It's a very easy read, especially for people who are starting businesses, entrepreneurs. Because it takes you through an income statement. It tells you how to read an income statement, how to read a P&L, how to read a balance sheet, how to create a balance sheet. But it's very, very simple. It's for people who are not either with a finance background or business background, but it's very, very simple. And it's told in the form of a story. But um, if you don't have this book, grab a copy of this book and check it out. This other one, this other one is a little deeper. And uh, this was a textbook that I had when I was in, I was working on my MBA. But the thing about this textbook I think is important is that you may not pick up this actual one, and this is called Managerial Economics. And it's a thin book, right? It's not a real thick book, but everybody lives close to a college or university. You still may want to go and just Google or pick up this, this book because... Um, the authors are Frobe, F-R-O-E-B, McCann, M-C-C-A-N-N, Ward, W-A-R-D, and Shore, S-H-O-R. Um, if you want to pick up this exact book, it's called Managerial Economics. But you know how textbooks are, you probably, nobody want to spend no $200 for this little book, but you may be able to go on Amazon, but pick up a book on managerial economics, because what this book does is, it, it really tells you how the economy works but it also gives you some insight on the thing that I, the biggest takeaway that I took from this book is it gives you a concept on how to make decisions. And that's deep. How to make good business decisions, right? Because sometimes we make business decisions and we're making them and we don't have all of the facts. So it, t it teaches you that kind of line of thinking. Like, do you have all of the facts to make a educated decision? Or are you just speculating? Like you just say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. But you haven't received all the facts. Not only, have, it, it takes it a step further. Do you have any, any incentives that may make your decision biased? So then you're like, wow, what does that mean? That means that, are you making this decision because you're gonna get compensated and that's why you're doing X? Or are you making this decision because you feel like you're gonna be able to get over on somebody. So that's going to make your decision flawed. So make sure you pick up a book on managerial economics because you don't have to be in college to learn college stuff. They just they just overpricing things. I mean, anybody can pick up a book and read it. I mean, you just get the book and, and start reading it. That's all you got to do. Pick it up. Like we talking about today, take some action. Just pick the book up and start reading it. That's all you got to do. Then that way you'll learn more about economics and then you won't just be a pawn, you won't be a pawn in the game, but now you'll start to understand how all of these pieces come together 
when you start looking at the economy. Because some people right now, they say this is the best of times. And you go right to another person, they saying this is the worst of times. Like, I ain't never been. But it's all percept it's all about your perspective, right? And all of what you've learned and how you manage it, how you take advantage of it. So definitely want to do that because that's one of my big things. That's why I'm a big proponent about reading, because reading, reading will break down barriers. It's not just about getting a degree, because it ain't about the degree. Don't get me, don't, don't let me start about that. It, it's definitely not about that. What it's about is you being able to get information, receive it, read it. They teach this in like second and third grade. Comprehend it, right? Read and comprehension. Be able to comprehend what you read. And then as adults, put it in action. Because again, if you're just reading it, you go, oh, that is a good concept. You go on off to sleep. Nah, you read it, you go, like, oh, that's how, that's why they do it. Yeah, that's why they do it like that. That's why they get 33% of my taxes. Yeah, oh, ah, ooh, okay. And then once you learn that game, now you can play the game differently. Just like any other game, right? Okay. This is why I came with the Daily Bread Radio they Show? They hung up. They hung up? Did you? Start that Bro, only thing you got to do is you got one don't job, start, man. Don't start only thing you got to do is see, answer the see, phone. See, see, you want me to talk? That's all. No, I want you to I'm talk, talking, man. Why? I don't want you to I'm talk. Talking, Look, man, we got guests okay, coming okay, on, okay. man. Uh, Pipe down. Bro. This is Joaquin Thompson with the Daily Bread Radio Show. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hi, my name is Monica. Um, I'm the parent of Lyric Jack, who is Oh, uh, how you doing, Monica? I'm well, thank you. Okay, I spoke to Anitra earlier. This is Joaquin Thompson Sr. and I'm the host of the Daily Bread Radio Show. And um, thank you for taking some time out to speak with us. And um, uh -huh. you know, we we on the uh, the Daily Bread Radio Show we wanted to let you know before we even get into the conversation that um, you you definitely have us um, our spiritual support because when we heard your story, uh, I shared it with my producer earlier. So um, we, you definitely have that just from the beginning because that's what we do. We really believe in supporting everybody in our community, right? So, um, but with that being said, uh, I received your email as well. And uh, I'm a researcher. I'm a, I'm a nurse by trade. And uh, before, okay. I, before I became a nurse, I was a microbiologist. So the email that you sent me, as soon as I read it, um, the first thing I started doing was doing some research and looking into it and like, how is this, this and that? And so that way I could be, you know, better prepared for when you came onto the show. So thank you for, again, taking some time out and uh, reaching out to us. But um, I want you to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience because we have quite a few people that um, I've invited to the show specifically to hear your story because I think they would be not only interested by it, but hopefully they would be um, compelled, would be the right word, compelled to assist as they can. Okay. Well, um, right now I'm dealing with my daughter is in the ICU, currently over at Elkton Children's Hospital. Um, it started, I want to say, probably the summer of 2000. 17. Um, she, really she has headaches, and um, it was nothing major. Like she was just like, "Mom, I have a headache," but she'll still continue to play. And as parents, you know, I just question, "How bad is it? You drinking enough water? Things like that? Go lay down." <clears throat> so she's a very active kid. Um, as days and weeks went on, she'll still say, hey, I have a headache. Um, sometimes my neck hurts, sometimes my back hurts, and it makes my head hurt. So I um, I took her to a pediatrician, and I was advised, so oh, she has a, a bug, here, give her this, you know, for nausea. Um, and it, it stopped for a minute. I wanna say I recall, like, in around Thanksgiving um, 2018, Lyric began to like throw up. If she eats something, she'll throw up. But she say, I feel, I feel fine, I feel fine. Um, 
that started happening frequently. Um, I want to say like a week after Thanksgiving, <clears throat> Rick had a really bad headache and she just kept throwing up, kept throwing up um, throughout the night. And I said, well, the first thing in her morning is to get to your doctor. Her doctor wasn't in, so I took her to the ER. The ER said she has a migraine and a stomach migraine. They gave me the same medicine that her pediatrician gave her to stop the nausea. Um, took her back home. She laid down for a while. She got up. I tried to give her some soup. I told her just, just sit slowly. I was like, I'm going to throw up. I said, just, just try real slowly to get something on your stomach. And she couldn't keep it down, she threw up. So I took her back to the ER. Um, they went ahead and admitted her. While we were there, they just kept trying different things, different things. I asked them, well, hey, can we just give her an MRI? And they said, oh, it's not necessary. Uh, they don't think anything serious is wrong with her. She's just having a stomach migraine and a, uh, a migraine to the head. And I'm thinking like, okay, my child hasn't eaten in days, like, five days or so now, something has to be wrong. You know, she's already a thin girl anyway, about 90, about 95 pounds. She's weighing a ton. Um, <clears throat> they changed her fluid to magnesium, and then lyrics began to eat. So I'm like, okay, great. She's feeling better. She's keeping food down. She's not throwing up. She has energy. Her friends came to the hospital and slept over for the weekend. She was laughing. And I'm like, great, we get out of here. After being in the hospital, maybe a little over a week. Um, so I go home. Well, actually, before I leave, they went ahead and unhooked her from all the fluids. And she ended up throwing back up and not feeling well. So now they say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and get an MRI. So while they were doing the MRI, I walked out with her dad and I went home to get my things ready for work because I'm thinking she's coming home. And then I get a phone call. Her dad was crying and he said, you know, she's really sick. They found a mask on her brain. Uh, I instantly felt numb and I just just dropped to my knees crying. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, what was going on. So, um, I rushed back to the hospital, um, and I had to keep it together around layers. I couldn't let her see me break down because Lyric had to keep her strength and stay strong through me. So, you know, the doctor pulled me to the side, came and talked to me, and told me, you know, they found a, um, a mass about the size of a, um, golf ball three inches at the time and that they were going to need to do surgery. Um, she began to ask me, after being in the hospital so long, she began to ask me, Mom, am I okay? Is there anything wrong with me? And I told her, you're going to be fine. And at the time, I couldn't tell her. I didn't know how to tell her because I didn't want her to freak out. Right. So um, I knew I couldn't let her go into a surgery without knowing what was going on. So. I'd uh, say about two days before her surgery, I went ahead and told her um, that she was going to have to have a surgery to remove what was making her have headaches. And she cried a little bit. Um, she was like, you mean there's something in my head? And um, she didn't really want to go into detail about it. You know, she's a really strong kid. She didn't want to go into detail about it. I think her attitude was like, let's just do it and get it over with. Um, so on December 7th um, or December 15th, she had the surgery and everything was, it went great. Um, they wasn't able to get all the tumor out because of the location where it is. Um, after the surgery, you know, Lyric was talking, she was doing well, she recovered well. Um, on December 22nd, we were out of there. She was back home um, for Christmas. So her oncology doctor was telling me that she needs to do chemotherapy. Um, as a parent, 
I'm thinking like, okay, I don't want to have to put my child through chemotherapy. I'm thinking about the hair loss. I'm thinking about the the medicine itself, how strong it is that's being put into her body. I'm thinking about all of that. Um, not only that, I'm asking questions about other people that went to chemo. They told me don't put her through it, don't do it. If they had to do it all over again, they wouldn't do it. So all that is weighing on me. But yet I'm having the doctor tell me this is a deadly tumor. It's fast growing. Um, it's very aggressive. If she does not do chemotherapy, your daughter will die. Um, I took my daughter to um, see a herb doctor that specialized in holistic care. And she was helping me out through the way, um, throughout, throughout all of this. And she told me only see very raw vegetables. And I mean, I, I, who can, how can you imagine a child just eating raw vegetables? That's all she can eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, just raw vegetables. And literally, there's not so many vegetables that she likes. So it was like a lot of broccoli she was intaking, things like that. Um, she can only have grapefruit. She can only have nuts, uh, walnuts, or um, almonds, and water was, was her diet. Um, so I'm constantly going to school, to her school to give her this, these foods and also give her some droplets that I had purchased through, um, through the herb doctor. And the tumor, when she went, got another MRI, a follow-up in February from her surgery in December, the tumor was stable. There was no signs of growth. I don't know if it's because Lyric was indulging in junk food at school. That's why the tumor um, grew out of control. But towards the end of March, on the 29th, the 30th, the 29th of March, I'm sorry, um, Lyric was feeling sick. And she told me she didn't want to go back to school until the tumor was gone because she don't want to be tempted to, to eat anything. And I asked her how she didn't eat stuff. She said yes. So she started back throwing up. I said, you know what, let's go to the ER. When I got to the ER, um, they did a CAT scan and it showed that the tumor had grew so large and it was bleeding and there was a lot of fluid on the brain. Um, I didn't tell her what was going on at the time, but she knew that she wasn't eating right behind my back. And I told her, you know, that's not your fault. I didn't want her to blame herself for doing that. Um, we began to cry and was like, you know, she hated herself for doing that. Mom, I'm so sorry. And things like that. Um, I told her, no, don't you worry. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Um, moments later, Mary ended up having a seizure and cold flu. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, the doctor, everybody rushed in and had to intubate her and things like that. Um, they came out and told me, there's no point of us doing a surgery if you don't follow through with chemotherapy. It, it would make no sense to put her through a surgery. So I went ahead and agreed to do the chemotherapy. Um, on April 1st, Lyric, um, they went ahead and stabilized it first. They had to put a drain, a drain in her head to get the fluid off the brain and to bring the swelling down so they could do a surgery. While waiting for that drain to start to go down, their blood pressure began to get really, really high. Her heart rate dropped down to the 20s. So it was really scary. They had to run with her to get another scan to see what was going on because they already have a drain to, to um, get some of that fluid off her brain. Right. After seeing what was going on, they had to go and do another um, drain, put two drains in her head, and had to speed up the surgery date to get that out. So after her second surgery, um, she still recovered. She was um, weak on one side. I, I noticed the memory, you know, she wasn't confident. Like if we leave our room, she really wasn't confident on which way to go to get back. But 
again, you can look at this child and, and it looked like there was nothing wrong with it. You couldn't tell she was, um, she'd been through surgeries and things like that. She just, she bounced back again. Um, I went ahead and did chemo. Chemo started um, in February, March. Chemo started like towards the end of April, around that time. Um, when she did the chemo, she came in, her head was hurting. And she told them that her head was hurting. But instead of them seeing what was going on, they just wanted to hurry up and get that medicine in. Or, I'm sorry, get, get her port. We had to come in and get a port before we started chemo. And um, when they did the port operation, they didn't do something right. So they had to go back and redo it again. So she had to wait 24 hours before they actually did another port. In the meantime, she's having headaches. And they just wanted to give her morphine to calm it down. But once the medicine wore off, she's like, I have a headache. But no one was hearing her that she has a headache. And so I, I kind of got a little frustrated. And I'm like, you guys keep giving her this medication. Like, she has a headache. You know, can we fix that problem before we start chemo? But it's like they wasn't hearing me. They went ahead and started chemo. And um, the next point, well, Lyric threw up. But Lyric didn't throw up because of the chemo. She threw up because her head was hurting. She, Lyric began to get frustrated with them as well and say and tell them that it's not my stomach that's hurting, it's, it's my head that's hurting. You know, my head's in pain. But they didn't think to do, go through another CAT scan. Um, they went ahead and started chemo that night. The next morning, I woke up, my child was unresponsive um, and she was blue in the face. So. It was cold blue again. Um, once they did a scan, they realized there was swelling. And so, again, they had to do the drain again on her head. Um, and that interrupted the chemo. Um, from there, they gave it, a, you know, some time to heal the drain, you know. Actually, the doctor had to go in and do a surgery and put a shunt on her brain. And that basically keeps the fluid off her brain and it'll just drain down into her stomach. Um, and that seemed to help. After that, I think we waited about four, four weeks, three or four weeks, and then we did the second round of chemo. Larry felt fine through, throughout the chemo. She wasn't tired. She wasn't, um, she wasn't nauseous. She wasn't no throwing up. She kept her energy up. I just made sure she drank like two, anywhere from two to three, sometimes four liters of water a day. Um, but she did fine. She did fine with the chemo. Other than losing her hair, um, she took that pretty well. Um, it, it's, it's like it wasn't a big deal about it, about her losing her hair. It's just, it's just like, oh well. She knew it was going to happen, but you know, when it happened, you're really not ready for it, but she was taking a shower one night and I heard her scream, you know, crying out of frustration, but it, she didn't dwell on it. You know, it was just like, I just told her, you know what, we'll, we'll get you a wig, you're beautiful anyway. Um, she just didn't dwell on the hair loss. So after the chemo, of course, you know, we waited, see what the result, results gonna be. And um, came back again, and the doctor said the chemo didn't help. Um, Lyric's tumor is really aggressive. We see more growth from her doing chemo. That it, it did kill the bloody part of it, but there's been growth from her having chemo. She's going to get another surgery. Um, so of course. Child's mind, she's thinking like, oh, I gotta go through this again. Um, this summer, I just tried to like make Lyric enjoy summer, and of course now, I think her self-esteem started to come down because it's like 
I've been doing this, I've been doing that, I've been doing this, and nothing is working. So right. now she's telling me she feels like giving up. Mm. She feels like dying. Wow. You know, why can't she be a normal kid? Just having to go through all of that. And on her birthday, it was 4th of July, I tried to make her have like a really special birthday. Um, so many people came out to support her for the cause. And she wasn't herself. Um, she was not herself at all. She was crying. She was throwing tantrums. Um, she was just angry. And I said, I brought her to the car. I'm like, come on. Like, come to the car. And she just started crying. And she's like, Mom, I might die. I have to have surgery. And I might die. I may not make it. Mm. And she was just sobbing. And I'm like, Claire, you know, don't talk like that. Don't think like that. When I got her home that night on the 4th, she told her dad that her stomach was hurting and her head was hurting. But then she'll tell me, oh, I feel fine. So I just slept next to her and, you know, I just monitor her sleep. And she kind of talked and just <sighs> sighed, you know. It was a little restless, but not too bad. The next morning when she got up, um, I told her, I said, hey, get this, get this smoothie for me. She drank her smoothie down and she opened up her gifts and she was happy and she was smiley and stuff and she was like mom can I take a bath and I took her upstairs to take a bath um, before she could get dried off she started throwing up and I saw her facial expression she was in a lot of pain so I went ahead and rushed her back to the ER um, they told me they did a CAT scan and they said that their ventricles had swelling up and the tumor I guess it's getting bigger. The body swelling. So they kept her overnight. This is July 5th. They kept her overnight and gave her steroids to keep it swelling down. And um, went ahead and let us go home the next day, which would have been the 6th of July. Her surgery was scheduled for the 10th. And leading up to the 10th, if you mention surgery, she would just get really upset. Uh, and that seemed to be the only thing that, that was on her mind was that surgery. And I kept trying to, you know, give her positive words, like, Larry, you know, you're going to be fine, you're going to be fine. And she just kept talking about dying, like, um, I feel I, I should just die, or I, I feel like just giving up. This is the conversation night before, and I'm like, no, don't, don't talk like that, don't say that, Larry. Um, the next morning, me waking her up for surgery, she was very angry. Very, very angry. She did not want to have surgery. But it's like, it's a situation where you dang if you do, dang if you don't. Like, if I don't do it, it's a possibility that tumor's going to grow, eventually it's going to swell up again, cause a blockage. She'll have a, uh, a seizure and to be gone. So I went ahead, you know, took her in. She didn't want me to touch her. Um, she was just really, really angry, part of it because she was hungry and couldn't eat. So after the surgery, um, she left me about 10. I didn't get to see Larry again until 10, 15 p.m. At six o'clock, they called me. About 6.15, they called me and said, are you still at the hospital? I said, no. She said, well, you can make your way back at the time. You know, we're wrapping things up. So I get back, and I'm, you know, I'm waiting and waiting, and they haven't, it, this is different now, because normally I'm, they have a room for me. They tell me where she's going to be coming to. I'm already in the room waiting. But this time it was different, so I felt something was going wrong. The doctor came down and he told me that surgery went well, it was, it was fine. It was having a hard time waking her up, but that could be because of her trying to hold on to the anesthesia or something like that. So, and that's probably around seven something when he came down. He said, "Give about 45 minutes. Let her wake up, and we'll have a have someone call you up to where she 
she's going to be, what room she's going to be in. 45 minutes went by, went longer than that. And I'm like, okay, now I'm getting antsy. I'm like, what's going on with Lyric? Like, where, why haven't anyone called me yet? Um, I didn't know they had to, they didn't intubate her. They were trying to refrain from intubating her, but they had the bag where they were trying to help her breathe and it was pumping for like over an hour. But when I got up there to her, she was just shivering, shivering really fast. And I, she just said, I'm cold. So I put blankets over her, a um, few blankets on her. And I just kind of like laid over her and held her. And she stopped shivering. And um, the doctor came in and talked to her. He asked her her name. Does she know where she is? How old she is? Um, what year is it? And she was able to answer all of those questions. She told me she was thirsty. I gave her some water. Um, they gave her her medicine. She took the medicine by mouth. Um, her dad told her, I love you. And I think she said, no, you don't. And, um, you know, she was, she was alert and conscious. I remember waking up because that, the machine kept going off, kept going off. And I, I woke up and I said to my nurse, I said, do you hear this machine going off? And she said, well, is it, we're in the middle of shift change and I'm, I'm charting or something like that. But she came on in and she said, but I'll turn it off. Mm -hmm. So I went to, to put a Lyric bed and Lyric didn't look right. Her face looked really swollen. Cause I took a picture of her the night before after surgery and her face was so pretty still. I'm like, wow, she, she doesn't like she had surgery. So I, um, I looked at her, her lips were blue and swollen and her face was swollen. And before I can go take them to the nurse again, the machine went off and then the nurse came in the room and she started shaking Lyric's heart, like Lyric, Lyric. And she was unresponsive. And so um, they did call blue and everyone rushed into the room and began to intubate her and and everything else they do when there's a cold flu. Um, I want to say maybe shortly after that, it was another cold flu for Lyric. And um, they went and did another scan. And now they're telling me that my child had a stroke and that she may be blind in one eye um, they told me that the brain stem looks, looks fine. They don't see no, no indication of the brain stem being damaged or anything like that. But, um, they said the tumor was growing. After this, after they just did surgery, they said they're, they showed the growth of the tumor. It's like they went and peeked at the tumor to, got angry and began to grow. So at this point, Lyric got her, um, she got her tube taken out yesterday. The breathing tube was, was removed yesterday. And she hasn't been, she hasn't talked. Um, I, actually, I think it was day before yesterday that they removed the tube. But she has not talked. Um, she only can move her right, her left hand. And um, she can't move her lower extremities at all, nor does she move her right hand at all. And it's like she just lay there. She's just laying there like like she's not there. Um, I've just been working with her. You know, I don't, I don't leave the hospital here right now. I just stay working with her, stay moving her legs. I'm starting to feel her push back. Like when I push her legs all the way up, I'm starting to feel her me. Um, her sister told her to show me one finger and she showed her one, she put up one finger, two, three, four, five, and she said she showed me zero and she took all her fingers away and put up a fist. Um, I just been in her face and I'm constantly just talking to her, speaking to her, and I told her, I'm like, Larry, can you say mama? You know, say mama. And today I heard her voice for the first time, she said, Ma, you know, 
um, but she just she just lays there, you know. And I, I just keep faith that with the trauma that she had going on and things like that, that she will recover from this as well. Um, the doctor just said he doesn't see any indication of her not being able to walk, but it just feels different. Like they're not telling me something. Like they know know something, but just not telling me something. But um, I just get this feeling like they have given up on her because the doctor, one of the, the oncology doctors made a statement saying something like we can keep her comfortable. So to me, I, I just feel like they've given up. And that's when I began to, um, I began to like search more for like new doctors and things like that. And that's when I found the doctor, Charlie Hale, um, who does the, he does like the inoperable surgery. Um, that doctors say they can't, they can't do. Um, there was a little girl that I read about. He did her surgery. She had an anaplastic pentadoma tumor, and he was able to remove it. And um, I think the tool that he used, someone in the medical, the medical doctors will make feel like it's um, um, I guess they just wouldn't agree with it, put it that way. They right, wouldn't agree with it. Because that's what I saw when I, when I did the research on it, when I was reading your letter, that's what um, uh -huh. some of the feedback in the medical community was. And he felt like it was, and I could see that some of it is ego um, mm -hmm. with some of his colleagues because he's been able to do some things that some other surgeons haven't felt comfortable with saying, I can't do that, but he came behind him and did it. So. And I think mm -hmm. that's where, so at this point, are we, is the goal to raise funds to have Dr. Teow to perform a surgery on there? Is that where we're, like where we are now? That's, that's my goal. I, I was able to reach out to his assistant and they told me to get her post-op MRI to them. And, um, I went ahead and shipped that out. They'll they'll receive it on Wednesday, and I just sent over like a cover letter about you know lyrics tumor, just telling them about her tumor and and just everything that has been done thus far. Um, and then we'll go from there. Once he once he gets her MRI Wednesday, uh, I would guess Thursday Friday, I would be able to see what he thinks and get his way on on it. But in the meantime, I just, I don't know, I just, I feel like hopeless. Like, I just don't know what to do. Like, I can't give up, I just know I can't give up on my child. No. And I've just been, I've been very grateful. Um, I don't have, I don't have a lot of family either. So I've just been grateful for so many people with, you know, their encouraging words, um, their donations, you know, just helping, helping out because <laughs> at this point, I just don't know what else to do. Right now, you, 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 I, I mean, as a parent and just listening to your story, and I don't know if somebody has already shared this with you, but you're doing what any parent would do, right? Because it's, it's really not in our nature to just say, that's especially for a 12 year old, you know, it's just like, you remember when she was 11, you remember when she was 10, you remember when she was eight. So you, I mean, and to see her going through all of these things, I mean, I, I mean, my personal opinion is you're doing as a mom, you're doing everything that you can do from the frame of reference of where you are right now. So one of the things as I was listening to you go through that, through your story is that as you're going through this too, my only, one of my recommendations is to make sure that you also get some support for you because you say you don't have a lot of family. And I mean from a behavioral standpoint because what happens a lot of times is when people are going through health challenges, it's 
it's one thing to have a family member go through the health challenge, but the caregiver, the person that's providing the support, the person that's they, you know, there day in and day out, you're also going through and taking up an emotional toll as well. So I would say make sure that you leverage the resources um, either in that facility or even outside of that facility to make sure that you get some support from that standpoint. And it's all right to say, like what you just said, I feel hopeless, I feel scared, I feel angry, I'm, I'm questioning, you know, whatever you're questioning, and speak to a professional, right? Because a lot of times um, when we talk to other people, especially when you're talking to somebody who hasn't been through what you've gone through, and very few people have, because it's a rare condition, because when I did the research, it says only, they only get 200 people diagnosed with this condition a year out of 300 million people. So it's a very rare condition. So it's very few people that mm -hmm. have gone through what you are experiencing right now. So it's okay for you to be okay with where you are. Don't beat yourself up. Don't think, because it sounds like you've done everything. You've been a tremendous, not only a parent, but an advocate. For her, so um, that would be my recommendation. And the other thing, we'll we'll definitely stay connected. But we also wanted to find out. And Anitra sent it to me, and I'm taping with my phone, so I can get it off there. But if you could give us the, we wanted to get the GoFundMe uh, page, so that way we can put it in our feed here. And I know Anitra is going to get on because she's like, I sent that to you. I know, but I'm. I'm taking them with the phone, so if you can get that to us again, I'm going to have my producer put that in our show feed, so that way even when people come back and look at this episode of the show, they'll be able to see that information, um, and they can come in and support, you know, as need be as well. Well, thank you. Um, so her GoFundMe page is Lyric Jacks, and that's L-Y-R-I-C. J A C K S. Is that it? Just lyric jacks? Is it like? Mm -hmm. You can you can find it by by um, just searching in her uh, name, searching okay. her name. And that's the GoFundMe. Mhm. Mm okay. Yes. All right. So what um, we'll we'll definitely put that in. Yeah, I, I tried to I tried to get her over at St. Jude's, but um, from my understanding, St. Jude's won't take her because she's already in the facility here. And when I spoke with someone there, they told me that they wouldn't be able to take her because children offer the same the same thing that St. That, um, Jude's offer. Okay. But when you have a doctor to tell you that like prayer just don't work, it don't work. Mm. That was a sign right there that you're not the doctor for my child, you know? Right. If that's a sign like right there that you don't have you don't have any hope, you know? Right. And tell me that you can just get her comfortable, like it just don't sit well with me. And like I said, I just just I just don't know I don't know what to do at this point other than to reach out reach out to that doctor that I said is over in Australia. Um, other than that, I just don't know which direction to go other than just see my lyric side and just, you know, nurse her and um, console, you know, just comfort her and nurture her. Like, it's almost like, it's almost like time is not on my side right now. And going throughout this journey, yes, the doctor has scared me from day one, and my child still has proved them wrong. So I try not to dwell on what the doctors tell me. I try not to dwell too much on what they say. And each day I just thank God for this day. Today, today was great, you know, her numbers looking good, you know, she's breathing. Um, she said, Mama, you know, she got out of got out of bed and was sitting up. That's that's what the therapist helped and stuff like that. And I just like 
Today was great. Okay, tomorrow will be greater. I look at it that way. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And what we want to do, too, is, um, you know, offer our support. So we'll make sure that we stay connected with both you and Anitra. And I want to thank Anitra for reaching out to me because um, Anitra reached out to me through a mutual friend. And um, she asked mm -hmm. that we would get the word out on our show. So we'll definitely, you know, do that on the, you know, the Daily Bread show. Um, make sure that we thank you. make your calls known. But we'll, we'll stay connected with you as well and, um, you know, continue to pray. For you, and, and and ask God to just be God, because um, like you said, at this point, you know, that would to me that would be one of the best things that we can do is just to be be prayerful. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, and um, if you ever want to, you know, you want to call into the show. I mean, we're here every Thursday from eight to nine. Give us an update. Let us know if there's anything that we can do. Um, we can definitely, you know, like I said, offer our support. And if it's something that we can do, then by all means, just reach out to us. Okay, I, I appreciate that so much. Yeah. And um, thanks for taking the time out and hearing, hearing my story about Lyric and um, just getting it out there to other people. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, def definitely, definitely, Monica. And we'll stay, like I said, we'll stay in touch. And uh, if you need anything, you can reach out to me. Anitra has my contact information as well. And uh, like I said, we'll stay connected and uh, just stay prayerful. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, bye-bye. Man. Clock goes out, though. Man. Clock goes out. Man, that's, man. Oh, man. I know we ran over, man, and, and thank you to you. Thank you to my producer, because uh, we, we did run over, and I mean, he's been a trooper. But uh, one thing I want to say before we sign off is like, a lot of times, man, we really, and that's what we were talking about earlier, a lot of times we really think we going through it, yeah. right? Like, you really think you like, man, my, my, my shirt don't fit right, my shoes ain't shiny. I mean, just small things, small. like really just, you know what I'm saying? It don't mean nothing. And you have the opportunity. Like I was talking about earlier, like I started off the show and said, mm -hmm. if, if, if it's not your season to be in that space, don't be in that space. Yeah. Don't be, I mean, don't be, don't let some something that's so small and you go on and on talking about something that's small. Just, I mean, just listening to her story, man, I'm like, mm -hmm. like, I mean, day in and day out, and you and you watching your seed. This your this your baby, and especially for a mom. I mean, dad's the one thing, but a mom. Yes. Man, and, and it's you know, she's. I mean, so like that's why I said the main thing is to make sure that Monica can get her some support because as a parent, we always you know, she gonna second guess. Should I did this? Or I shouldn't have. And I should have did this. And then if I had did this, this wouldn't happen. And, Blaming herself. I mean, man, we, that's why I love this show. That's all I'm going to say, man. I, I don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, that's why I love this show, man. And, and I thank God that, um, I thank God that he gave me this platform. I thank God that, man. Come on. Come on. I just, I mean, I mean, stuff, I mean, the stuff that he, man, I just thank God that he gave us this platform, man, that, um, you know, we talk about personal finance and all the stuff we trying to do and all the people we trying to help, man, but, and, and the, cra the, the biggest thing that we did tonight, man, and I realized I was listening, as I was listening to her tell her story, the only thing she wanted to do was share her story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She just wanted somebody to hear what she's been going through. That's all she wanted to do. She just wanted a listening ear. That was it, man. So I, I just, I thank God for the stuff that he's, you know, blessed us with, the opportunities that he's blessed us with, to, to touch the people that we need to touch. Because, yeah, you know, some people, oh, I got a million followers. I, man, 
that's that's cool and all, but if we can help one person, yeah. right? If we can help one person on this show, then we've done our job. So we put the information in about the GoFundMe page. The thing that I'm gonna say is um, I'm gonna challenge everybody out there. And this is a show about personal finance, so I'm not, I can't speak for everybody's, you know, we ain't gonna speak about economics, I'm just talking about, you give what you, what you feel in your heart that you can give without being a burden to yourself. Let me just put it that way. I'm gonna put the challenge out there. I'm gonna start off the donation. Um, I'm gonna commit to $100 to, um, the cause, because like with me, I'm just, I just got an analytical mind, and the way my mind works is like, if 1,200 people gave $100, she got 120. Exactly. She got 120 k 1,200 people gave $100, but if it ain't 1,200 people, then it could be, you know, 10,000 people giving, you know, $12.50, right? So, everybody just do, do, do what you can. But do something. But do something. You know what I'm saying? Cause I mean, I mean, we gonna buy dinner. We gonna go to Applebee's. Or we gonna, I mean, that young lady would just love to just have her daughter home. She's not asking for nothing. It ain't about that. I read up on the position <clears throat> that she's talking about. And again, not to, I'm gonna be respectful of my producer's time, but if you get the opportunity, just do some research on Charlie Teo, T E O, and um, this. This guy, that was the first thing that comes up when you Google him, is that it's an interview that he's having with a newscaster because, you know, one of his one of his professors, one of his medical professors, said that he's out here taking money from people, charging one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to do these surgeries mm. on these kids that have these inoperable tumors. But let me tell you something about being in the health profession: if you go in and have a total knee. Right? If you have a total knee procedure, right, just where they go in, they replace your knee, that's sixty or seventy thousand dollars. Just that. So if somebody tells you, a surgeon tells you, like, hey, I could come in and remove an inoperable brain tumor and I charge you hundred and twenty thousand dollars, that's a bargain. Even if you want to if you want to be like my mom used to say, even if you want to be asinine and go there. $120,000 on an inoperable brain tumor, that's nothing. That's nothing. So I'm going to leave y'all with that. Then I thank y'all for everybody for, you know, tuning in. I know I've seen a lot of people. I've seen my big brother, Derek Williams, on. I've seen um, my other big brother, William Redmond, on. Shout out to the good cues. I've just seen a lot of people kind of scroll through Eric Strickland. And um, if I missed anybody, you know, uh, I, I appreciate you joining the show. And just... Just share this with somebody, man. Just share our story. And like I said, you know, give what you can give. And if you can't give, we totally understand. But if you can, then do. Just like what we talked about, we start off the show with. Take some action. Take some action. Your $5, your $1, your $8, every, all of it helps. So um, with that being said, I wanna, um, we're going to sign up for the evening. And uh, we'll see y'all back here next Thursday. We'll have a, a a crazy show next Thursday. Crazy show. So um, y'all stay tuned. Daily Bread Radio Show. Next week will be double digits. We'll be episode 110. Yes, sir. All right? We out of the single digits. We headed for 200. Single. You know? So y'all y'all stay tuned to the Daily Bread Show. And uh, we appreciate y'all. And y'all, uh,